Hi, and uh, welcome to LB0 Fox India Norwegian Ham Ventures. I'm Morten, LB0 Fox India. And this is the ICOM IC F1610, which is a radio you might have seen before, but you don't really know anything about. At least I didn't. Uh, this is a commercially made uh, VHF radio by ICOM. I'm not going to say 2 meter radio because it's per definition not a 2 meter radio. It's a VHF radio made for commercial purposes. You might have seen these radios in taxis, buses, police cars, ambulances, fire trucks, pretty much everywhere where a mobile radio is needed professionally. So why did I get this radio? Well, it was cheap. And I figured, why not? But before we dive any deeper into that subject, let's bring it on to the workbench and take a look at it. So here we go with the radio over on my relatively messy workbench. Uh, I'm trying to keep the work surface clean, but I mean, like any other ham, I got a gazillion projects going on at the same time. But if you we first start with a look on the top of the radio, uh, you can see that the almost the entire body of the radio is a giant heat sink. There is no fan on this radio. Look at the rear here. There's nothing much. There's the uh, SO239 for the antenna. There is a mini jack for the speaker. And then there's the power cord. And that's it on the back. Bottom, solid aluminum. Same with the entire body except for the faceplate. We got the uh, little sticker here. It says uh, ICOM VHS transceiver ICF1610 made in Japan and then a serial number. Not not much to, to go by there. Look at the front panel. Nothing too exciting here as well. Got a volume control. Uh, mic and programming socket here. Um, five function keys which can be programmed in the software. We'll take a look at that right away. Uh, power key, up and down keys, and then a numpad. And my, I haven't really figured out what the numpad is, but my assumption is that that is for DTMF signaling. Uh, you cannot enter frequency directly through the numpad, but uh, it's going to serve some purpose, but for my use case and for ham use, it doesn't. And for programming, I got one of these uh, octopuses, or is it octopies? I don't know. One octopus, several octopi. One octopus, several octopus, several octopuses. I don't know. But I got one of these programming cables with a lot of different connectors. And it turned out that one of the RJ45 connectors here fit the radio. And I was able to program it without a special ICOM cable, which I kind of feared at first. But let's take a quick look at the programming software. And one of the issues with, with a radio like this is that there is no VFO on it. There is no way of inputting and uh, inputting frequencies and controlling a radio from the front panel. This is a radio that is made to be as easy as possible for the end user. Although I've seen one YouTube video where there apparently is some uh, ham friendly firmware for this but I haven't been able to dig up any more information so uh, if you know anything about it let me know down in the comments and uh, we'll take a closer look at that if I can find out any more you can also see that this software is not by any means new and it is not by any means easily obtainable um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a link to a website that has a link to the programming software. And uh, this is by no means legal advice for you. So uh, do your own do your own legal thinking about this. Uh, but the software is so old that I would consider this abandonware. Uh, nonetheless, it is pretty simple, though. Uh, you have a little tab up here. You can... Uh, enter the memories as you would like. I'm not going to, I am not going to show you how to program it. You've programmed a radio before. So uh, I'm just going to show the software here. There are some uh, tabs here with uh, Squelch, uh, Talk Out Timer, I mean, anything you'd like. And there was also a scrambler function, which is a ham you shouldn't do. So it's a relatively simple radio to program. Uh, you just got to ignore the stuff you don't know what to do. And if you do that, 
you're good. You can also set the functions of the different keys on the radio. Um, and I've set mine to uh, to scan, uh, to add to scan list, um, and then power settings and such. You'll have to do this yourself, actually. This is just to give you a little bit of an overview. But that's it with the programming software. So what do I think of this radio after a week? Well, it's an easy radio. It does the job as long as you program in the simplex frequencies and the repeaters you want to use. Nothing much to do on radio except adjust power settings, um, scanning, and um, up and down arrow to change the channels. But it works, and the radio is sensible. It's got really good sensitivity. Um, I've been able to hear repeaters that I haven't heard on any other 2 meter radio in the shack. And then again, it's built like a tank. But the main reason I bought this was because it was cheap. I bought it at a ham fest and um, it cost me about 30 US dollars um, converted. So uh, pretty much a good deal. What I didn't know though, and uh, you'll have to take this into consideration when buying one of this, is that the radio does not have an internal speaker. Uh, when I discovered that, I dis decided to do my own solution to it. So I took a speaker out of an old uh, Yaesu radio that I had lying around that didn't work, uh, put a Minijack connector on that, and 3D printed a case. That might not be your solution, but do remember you need an external speaker for this radio if you're getting one. But if I could find one at the price I gave, or probably up to two or three times as much as I gave for the radio, I'd buy it without a doubt again. It's a simple radio, it's built like a tank, and uh, it's durable. This is going to outlast me as a ham, I think. And if it doesn't, I'll just recap it. So that's those are my thoughts on the ICOM ICF1610. Is this a radio for you? Well, you'll have to decide yourself, but I like this old little thing here. So um, hope you like this video. Leave a comment down below. Click that thumbs up button, you know the drill. Um, if you want to support the channel a little bit financially, there are memberships, patrons, and such uh, down below. But only do that if you think you can afford it. That's it for this time, my friends. Until next time, 7-3.